watch this. For the first time in nine months, Idaho gas prices are back below $4 a gallon. But depending on where you live in Idaho, well, your gas price may be better or worse. Lawmakers are now set for the 2023 legislative session, completing the organizational session today. One fun part of the process this week, picking where lawmakers will sit for their next term. And we're on the eve of a Super Saturday, parades, winter weather, and championship action on the blue at Boise State. Ahead, Jay Tusk joins us to talk Broncos football. Well, thanks for joining us here on your Friday. We have a large variety of things to get into here on the 208, and make sure you send in those text messages. We'll be checking those right at the end of the show. But I do want to start with this. Good news, everyone. A gallon of regular gas in the Gem State is officially $3.99. And today is the first time it's been under that $4 mark since March of this year nine months ago. So yeah, what a year it's been. A year ago today, by the way, the Idaho average for a, a gallon of regular gas, 367. And data shows that the state average has actually dropped by eight cents in just the past few days, with prices in the Treasure Valley falling by about 10 cents over the same time period. And AAA tells us that they hope that the gas prices are hopefully encouraging for families wanting to drive this holiday season to go see your family, friends, all that. But let's talk a little bit about the context you know, behind these gas prices. And we'll take this full graphic here all the way up on the screen so everybody at home can see this. So you can see here, AAA in Idaho, they say that the, the average is 399 statewide, of course, the national average, about 345 there, so a little more expensive in the state of Idaho. But here's what I want to show you. If we zoom into southwest Idaho here, we take a look, you'll see a lot of the red areas. The red areas you see on your screen, which is really the Treasure Valley, well, the median gas price, the average gas price there, it's not below $3 a gallon or $4 a gallon, I should say. In Ada County, the average price still $4 and about a cent there. If you go over to Canyon County, you can see in Canyon, a little more than $4 a gallon there. And if you go a little bit to the south, you can see in Owyhee County, a little more than $4. So you say, all right, Joe, well, where's this below $4 a gallon gas? Well, let's go up north here. If you're in the northern part of the state, here's some good news for you. Kootenai County. 367. Go south to Benoit County, 374. Go a little further south, Lataw, still below $4 a gallon. So we talk about the average being below $4 a gallon. You could take a look. The blue areas is where you're going to see the cheapest gas in Idaho. So hopefully that's in your neighborhood. If you're in the Treasure Valley, though, and you're taking a look at all this, you'll see that in southwest Idaho, we're still technically above that $4 a gallon mark. But there is some encouraging news on the way there. I know a lot of folks that we see in the text message line saying, we hope we see cheaper gas by the holidays. So there you go. Officially, Idaho's gas price is below $4 a gallon, but, well, not so much. Anyways, all right, let's talk about some other nuts and bolts for you. The Idaho lawmakers, they finished up their organizational session earlier today. And the org sesh, as it's called, it sets up the 2023 legislative session. That begins in January, January 9th to be exact. And so that includes electing party leadership, setting up committees, and also the session helps lawmakers get familiar with all the new faces at the Capitol. Another thing they do during the organizational session, and this answers a popular 208 question, they decide on where everybody will sit. And this isn't a euphemism for political protocol or anything like that. I literally mean they draft where they're going to sit every day at the State House, run the House or the Senate. So why do they do this? How does it work? Well, party leaders, they have their seats basically lined up from the start. So people like the House Majority or Minority Leader, for example, they basically sit along the middle aisle about halfway back. After that, though, as you watch here, names are drawn from a hat and selection groups are based on seniority. But lawmakers, they have a solidified seat. So yeah, they pick out of the hat, they call them up, and they say, OK, here's your placard. Get out there and figure out where you want to sit. And there is some coordination between lawmakers sitting near friends or political allies. But if you were wondering, yeah, they're given the placard, they walk over to their desk, and then they install it themselves. So those big fancy nameplates that you might see on the House floor, you could see there, the lawmakers, 
they set it up themselves. So it was interesting yesterday to watch as the more senior members of the legislature got to draft their seats and then, you know, some of the younger members, the freshman members that'll officially begin in January, they were the last to choose their seats. So it was fun to kind of watch people pointing, picking out exactly where they're going to go. I'm sure some people actually coordinated before that whole thing where they'd like to sit. So anyways, long story short, like middle school, yes, they do seat selection. You choose your own seat. So there's your answer to the 208 popular question. Where do the lawmakers sit and how, they did, how do they decide it? So there you go. We are in the season of giving and the season of thanks, a very important time. And there's a lot of great community events this month to raise money and collect goods for the people that need it most in our community. And we're excited for the annual Seven Cares Idaho Shares event coming up on December 10th. So coming up quickly. Ahead of that, though, we want you, the community, to know where your donations go and how your generous contributions of food or money can help people in need. So this Sunday morning at 9 o'clock on our Viewpoint program, Doug Petcash, he chats with the Idaho Food Bank president and CEO, Karen Vack, and she tells us that they're in need of the community's help, and the need this year is great. Well, I wish I could say the numbers are down, but they're not. Um, they're certainly down from the pandemic time, but we're not back down to the pre-pandemic levels. And over the last um, few months, we're seeing an uptick, an increase in those numbers. So we're, we're providing food that reaches about 184,000 people every month. Wow. That's, that's a lot. That's 10% of the population. It is 10%. That's about the, the rate that we're seeing today. We also know that during the winter months, we typically see those numbers go up um, because expenses increase during the winter time with heating bills. And so there's a lot of need in our community and Karen Valk is, Valk, I should say, is correct. So we're gonna learn more about the Idaho Food Bank and Seven Cares at nine o'clock this Sunday morning. And they're also gonna introduce us to some other nonprofits. They're gonna explain how the Idaho Community Foundation also helps to make sure that all of the money donated to Seven Cares gets exactly where it's supposed to go. So to learn more about some of the charities that uh, Seven Cares benefits, you can watch Viewpoint with Doug Petcash, nine o'clock on Sunday morning right here on News Channel 7. And we're actually going to keep talking about this for another minute or two. On your screen is a list of the nine amazing charities that the money raised during Seven Cares. This is where it goes to. And it really helps benefit so many people all across the Treasure and Magic Valley. So a huge thank you to everyone who's already donated. And if you're interested in donating, there's still time to do so in many ways you can do it. And of course, you can donate now through December 10th. It's very easy. You just scan the QR code on your screen to donate. Of course, if you don't want to wait till Seven Cares Idaho shares on the 10th of December, you can donate right now. If you haven't done this before, you take your cell phone camera, line it up to the screen there and click the red seven and it'll launch you to a brand new website and there you will be able to donate. And we'll also be collecting food donations at several locations throughout the Treasure and Magic Valleys next Saturday on December 10th. And you can find a list of those locations where we're coming to your neighborhood, as well as a link to the donation and everything you need to know right now, ktvb.com. And I just want to tell you this, we have a huge day for you here tomorrow, huge here on Channel 7. You're going to want to stay locked in all day. We're calling this KTVB Super Saturday. So here's the lineup for you. Join us early tomorrow at 8 a.m. for a special Saturday morning news. They're going to go stuff the bus and do some great stuff to raise toys for kids in need. Following the Saturday morning news, we'll have the Boise Holiday Parade. This is correct. Santa Claus is in fact coming to town and so is all the holiday cheer and excitement for our valley. Our team will be live in downtown Boise for the annual parade there, but that's not all. Right after the parade, and I'm not talking a little bit later, no, directly right after the parade, we have a special edition of Bronco Roundup Game Day Show. Jay Brady and the whole KTVB team will get you pumped and prepared for the Mountain West Championship game on the blue. Boise State versus Fresno State, and they're actually going to join us after the break. Jay and Brady, so we'll talk more about the game coming up. But game time, 2 p.m. tomorrow on Fox. But right after the game, hop back to Channel 7. We have some more special post-game coverage live from Albertson uh, Stadium. Again, it's a super Saturday on 7 tomorrow. Look at that alliteration. But Jay and Brady, they're going to join us right after the break. We're getting into some sports here on your Friday 208. We'll roll on after this.
All right, let's do some 208 sports. This is always fun. When the Fresno State football team takes on Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game tomorrow, a familiar face will return to Boise. Kirby Moore, yes, the younger brother of Kellen Moore, is the offensive coordinator for the Fresno State Bulldogs. And while his coaching career has taken off, star quarterback Jack Hayner, well, he recently explained that his passion for cars stuck in neutral. Kirby's funny story, right when I first got here, dude was driving like a 2001 Mazda, tiny little Mazda that was his wife's car in high school. And they're like 33 now. And I'm like, Kirby, you just got a huge promotion. Why are you driving this Mazda still? And he's like, ah, oh, dude, it's, you know, it's all reliable. It keeps me humble. I'm driving to work, no AC, and this little beat up Mazda. It's got like 300,000 miles on it. Hey, dude just got a new car like last week. He showed me the keys the other day. He's like, look what I got. And I was like, dude, it's about time. I mean, you're making how much, 400 grand a year and you're driving a beater 2001 Mazda? I mean, it was funny, man. And, and he was joking about it and, and he's fired up about his new ride, but um, he's keeping the Mazda in his, in his driveway. So it's funny, we won't let her go. All right, so joining us now is the tallest Treasure Valley team. Brady, you're basically almost out of the shot. If people were <laughs> curious, though, the sports guys are really athletic, and they really do know sports. You can tell by their heights. But anyway, enough about you guys. Let's talk about the Boise State Broncos, uh -huh. because you get this feeling that if they're in a situation like they are tomorrow, the yeah. Mountain West Championship game in the future, with the expanded college football playoffs, mm -hmm. it's not out of the question that the Broncos could yeah. be playing in that big playoff soon. It, it's been news we've been kind of waiting for for a little while now, but yesterday they announced that in 2024, the college football playoff will be expanding from four to 12 teams. Now, if you look in the past, that would have given Boise State access to the college football playoff on eight different occasions. This year, as Joe just said, a little bit different. They wouldn't necessarily be competing it for tomorrow, but earlier today we had the chance to catch up with Boise State Director of Athletics, Jeremiah Dickey, and he told us about the benefits of this new rule. And we knew this day was coming at some point. Um, we thought it was going to come last year, you know, with an announcement, and we had to wait another year, and that's fine. But I, I think it's, it's huge for us uh, and, and our brand and what we're here to uh, accomplish and compete on a national level. Um, and I believe we're the, the number one, you know, uh, outside of the Power Five in that category. And I think that says a lot of, of the foundation that we've inherited and where we want to take this place. It's interesting, Joe, because you look at some of these other uh, group of five programs, maybe Central Florida, Cincinnati, Houston, they've all contended for that New Year's Six status in the past. They are all moving up, though, to the Power Five Conference, uh, the Big 12 here in the near future. That means that Boise State is right for the picking here to maybe position themselves not only as just a favorite out of the group of five, but the perennial favorite out of the group of five to represent um, – the, the, the lower tier, the non-Power the non -power 5 conferences, if you will, in the college football playoff. Monetarily, that's huge. Exposure-wise, massive. It so, almost adds another question of if it's even worth to try to get an invitation to a Power 5 conference when you have the opportunity to kind of just run the table in the, in the Mountain West mm -hmm. and, and be that perennial powerhouse in terms of a G5 program. Yeah, you know, you're, at that point in time, you're, you're betting on yourself because if you ever slip up, that means that you're, you know, by going into a Power 5 conference, you're just going to be guaranteed a lot more money. But by betting on yourself, you're, you're right. There is a chance that you could contend for more, have better access to contending for a national title. And I'm curious what you guys think about the future of college football in the sense that, for, for Boise State specifically, mm -hmm. there's this idea now that if Boise State loses more than two or three games, mm -hmm. a lot of fans lose interest. And that's yeah. just the way it goes. Moving forward, is that going to be the same where Boise State to stay in contention for the college football playoff? They have to go nearly perfect? Well, I, you know, you actually asked me this before the show when we were in the newsroom talking about it. Like this year, no, they, they wouldn't be in contention for that spot, even going into the Mountain West Conference Championship game. 
but had they not lost to BYU and they were sitting, you know, at, at 10 and 2 right now with a chance to win their mountain to, to win their conference championship, you know, in a typical year that would put them right in the thick of it to maybe make the college football playoff because I, I can't remember if I said this or not. The, the group of five is guaranteed a spot, one of those 12 spots. And so that, that's, that is phenomenal access for, for Boise State moving forward. So that's a spot earmarked for the Broncos. Before we wrap up real quickly, the game tomorrow against Fresno State. Brady, of course, we're very familiar with seeing the Bulldogs. What can we expect tomorrow? A similar game to earlier this season? Have both teams maybe changed? I think it's going to be a lot different with the addition of Fresno State's quarterback, Jake Hayner. I mean, he's the real deal. Coach Andy Avalos said he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And, uh, you know, Taylor Green, Boise State's quarterback, has also gone much better since that Fresno State game. I think we're going to see a lot more offense. I think it's going to be more of a shootout, and that's coming from a game last year where the teams combined for 60 total points. So I think it's going to be even more explosive this time around, though. Jay, I'm curious. Are you keeping track of the tickets being sold? I know there's a push on social media by current and former mm -hmm. players. Pack the blue. Fill the blue. Any yep. idea? We haven't gotten a t ticket update recently, but it's trending towards what's happened in years past, which will put it right around 25,000. The difference with this game as opposed to regular season games, they don't have those 18,000 or so season ticket holders to lean on to help fill Albertson Stadium. They literally start from zero for this game. So even to get to 25,000, it is a nice accomplishment. I know they're really pushing for more, but hey, for guys like Scott Matlock, JL Skinner, this is Boise or Bronco Nation's last chance to see these guys play on the blue um, and, and it's for a Mountain West championship something they haven't secured since 2019 so it's going to be an awesome game tomorrow as Brady said man these are these are two epic quarterbacks going at it and I know everybody focuses on Jake Hayner's back and healthy but Taylor Green has gotten so much better since the last time Boise State and Fresno State played if you look back since uh, week nine which is basically when Taylor took over uh, this team uh, you have two of the top ten quarterbacks off pro football focuses ratings, two of the top quarterbacks in the country playing on the blue um, on Saturday. And I, I just think it's going to be an awesome matchup. I don't think it, this, this, this specific matchup is getting the hype around the country it deserves, but I bet on Sunday we're all going to be talking about how, how great this game was. All right, Jay Tuss, Brady Frederick, and, uh, of course, the Bronco Roundup game day show tomorrow right after the holiday parade here on 7. Mm -hmm. Super championship Saturday tomorrow. This I, is going to be fantastic. I can't wait for Boise State to make the championship game next year so you give us another invite to come on the show with you. That's right. This is the best. Look at this. The tandem of tall guys. That's great. I've never been called tall. I'm six foot I, three, I so you know. Tall, <laughs> All right. Tyson says we have to go to break. So we're going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Sophia's going to tell us about the snow report.
As we so casually went to break, Sophia, we mentioned as we came back, we'd be talking about snow and snow reports, and I saw some snow flying, but I know the skiers and snowboarders want to know, is there more in store? So there's definitely more in store, but we've seen quite a bit stack up already. And if you were wondering, hey, we talked about each day's total, but what did we get for the whole storm system? While well, for many ski resorts, it was more than 20 inch. 20 inches for some spots. So around 72 hours, Bogus Basin got 21 inches over at Brundage, over 72 hours, 24 inches. Tamarack about 26 inches over 48 hours. So lots of snow for all these different ski areas. Sun Valley 18 inches in the past three days. So definitely a healthy way to start off that snowpack for those ski areas. And there is more on the way, but we get a little bit of a break first. So you can see our radar is a lot less busy than it was yesterday, but we're still lingering with some clouds there in the northern and western part of the state. But as I mentioned, that calmness is going to last only for a little while. We're already starting to see our next system start to move onshore uh, from the west coast. So now let's take a look at what these snowy views that we were given with all the snowfall. So this is the view from McCall. And again, McCall is one of those areas that's lingering with some of those clouds. You can see definitely a wintry view there and you can see lots of that snow piled up there and looks like the clouds are still lingering there right now. So a lot less blue sky over there, but over in Stanley, we did see some clearer skies, certainly some winch reviews. You can see the snow's even piling up on some of these tree branches where it looks pretty heavy. But if we look ahead for the weekend, again, I mentioned Saturday we get a bit of a break. So tomorrow we get a break. Well, we, we, what we don't get a break from is the cold temperatures. So we'll be seeing some frigid temperatures even in valley locations. Tomorrow we warm up to the higher end of the 30s. Sunday we start to see that snow come back for valley locations. And so for a Treasure Valley area, that's going to be between one and two inches. Two would be the high end. We could see some of that mix with rain. Over to the mountains, though, we're definitely talking about frigid temperatures. So please be careful if you're headed out that way. We're talking about below zero in some spots and definitely colder spots. And then Sunday, we're expecting even more snow again with temperatures below freezing in some spots. Ooh, thank you very much, Sophia. Snow on the way. Well, in the days before a potato fell from the sky in downtown Boise, ringing in the new year was likely tame. Remember Y2K? The worry about computers stopping, maybe even melting down, the world ending. Yeah, Y2K was fun. Well, there was a similar concern in Boise leading up to the turn of the century. On the evening of the beginning of aughts, John Miller sat out to see what the commotion over portable commodities was all about in this 208 redial. <laughs> Only weeks away from Y2K and the city's run into a bit of a port up problem. I mean, is the question going to be on Y2K where to go? Oh yeah, totally. Todd McKay, the mayor's right hand bathroom man, says the whole New Year's Eve celebration is almost sponsored. And the mayor and I literally went to 40 corporations. Got them to sponsor just about every attraction at the gig. Except for one, buddy. You That's know, because title. everybody wants to sponsor well, things look. like uh, fireworks and Oh yeah, stuff, fireworks are sexy. Nobody wants their fireworks name are next sexy. to Fireworks are sexy, balloons are hot, <laughs> porta potties are. Not. Not, exactly, yeah. you got it. Not one company wants to put up $5,000 to pay for about 100 portable toilets, which is only 50 bucks a porta potty pop, which got me thinking. What do you think? I like it. This like toilet it. brought to you by John Miller. Or even better. This, this John, John brought to you by Miller. Works perfect. I like it. Because unless someone coughs up the commode cash, Todd says the city's souvenir profits will literally go right in the can. But I did come yeah. up with one for the mayor. The mayor's throne, have a seat. Dan. From your friends at City. Let's make sure we pronounce that right, <laughs> City Hall. I even got yours here. <laughs> Todd's toilet, feel, feel free. free. This is a big business, man. Your logo here. Opportunity Chance. awaiting. That's why they've printed up these. The porta it's potty the party poopers pamphlet. pamphlet. Exactly. Yeah. You want to sponsor doing? a porta, you give me a call. Don't be a porta potty party pooper. Exactly. Put your name on it. Exactly. John Miller, Idaho's News Channel 7. I never want to hear that things these days are more outrageous than ever because it's just not true. Anyways, the cost to rent those porta potties has gone up much like everything else these days. But according to the city so far, there is no concerns in Boise about portable toilets so far for this New Year's celebration. Guess we'll find out soon. All right, comments after the break.
All right, let's take a look at some of your comments from today. Let's see what the board says. This person says, Joe, are all your work shirts in the laundry? That's from Jill in Boise. Yeah, thank you, Jill. This is my new shirt. I wouldn't call it a typical new shirt. It is more of a regular shirt. But I just want to say, my dad, who, who's in Denver, we're wearing the same shirt today, so that's why I'm wearing this. We decided to wear matching shirts. He's an accountant, though, so he is not on TV. Uh, this person says, nice to see Al Borland has joined the show. Yes, Tim and Al, that's very good. And then this person says, I'm not as tall as I said I was. They're right. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for the Saturday morning news and the holiday party.